Good morning, folks. Three top science stories, top two weather and environment events. One place to begin. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and finding relative quiet with a lack of sunspots, but one of the previous coronal holes, now departing, is having its solar wind stream arrive at Earth. Unlike the cosmic ray spike over on the left of the chart, what's happening this morning on the right is real solar wind. Plasma density is fluctuating and stream speed begins to climb. We do already begin to see the effects on the global magnetic field and geomagnetic system integrity. KP, although rising, is still in the green. No magnetic storm conditions yet, but we'll be monitoring for those today. We do recall that the Ubinus volcano in Peru went off, smoke and ash easily visible pluming eastward on the GOES satellites, and this morning we are hearing that the ash emission into the lower, slower-moving atmosphere was continuous, leaving the haze eking its way through the valleys towards the populations to the south. They are evacuating. Meanwhile, India's monsoon still playing favorites with different sides of the subcontinent, but in doing so, unleashes just too much on that region it's supposed to be sparing from drought. In this case, lightning, 32 confirmed dead in the event. Let's go to three big science stories that all tie together. First, there's been a major quality increase in climate models achieved by realizing cloud feedbacks and by reducing aerosol sensitivity. To translate that, it means the pollution effect has gone down. Clouds are more important than they originally realized. This is what Princeton insisted 18 months ago. And of course, the number one modulator of those clouds and cloud cooling potential is cosmic rays. Those cosmic rays also interact with aerosols to produce cooling clouds. This is obviously a huge part of our textbook. And in that book, we point out the major solar forcing event of 2015. For those who know the 2017 solar flare and hurricane coincidence, try six of them in the Pacific at one time during a major solar storm. It was the event noted in the book as the most obvious and severe event weather forcing we'd seen. And here, we now know its plasma and ion effects were easily playing in the global electric circuit to affect those hurricanes since they so affected the ionosphere. By the way, about half the forcing pathways likely also involve the sun's interplanetary magnetic fields, which reach out and connect to the planets. Of course, that is how we predict earthquakes. Want to give a shout out to Terence Allen, African-American gent on the right there, came to the conference originally to learn how to predict earthquakes, and he did just that. After nailing the most recent seven-pointer in Indonesia, that makes three seven-pointers he's nailed since QuakeWatch.net forecasting began. And today, we get a phenomenal paper on this exact topic. As definitive and simple as you'd want to explain it to anyone, there are electromagnetic anomalies present hours to days before major earthquakes, such that their effects are seen in many of the things we already track for meteorology. Specifically on the negative anomaly of this paper, let's go to chapter 7 of our book, The Electromagnetic Effects That Trigger or Foretell Earthquake Activity, and there's a bunch of them. This image actually shows the negative anomaly before a Chile 8-pointer. Solar flares, CMEs, cosmic rays, weather, hurricanes, climate, earthquake forecasting, the effects on technology and human health as well. Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. Get it at otf.cells.com. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.